Yes, 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 yes. Namaste, man. Welcome back to the channel. So, I'm going to be trying to be trying. Can't even speak English. All right, this is pretty informal. I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to turn my podcast on here. And it's in my ear. That's why I have a headphone. If I'm talking loud, it's because I'm hearing, uh, it's a real sophisticated <laughs> setup that I use. It's actually terrible. So I'm going to hear my intro music and then we'll get on to my lesson today. You know, we've been riffing on the 10 pillars of success and you're probably come across and like, what is this crazy motherfucker talking about? Listen, I'm blue collar. I didn't go to college. It's not because I'm not smart. I just didn't go. Uh, be honest, I couldn't, I can't do fucking science. That's what killed me, man. That and foreign languages. Crazy, huh? I've gone on to make millions of dollars and I was terrible in school, but I'm not like, I'm really, I can study histories and markets and I'm good at basic numbers. I just never was good at school. I'm not, I'm not a mechanical guy. Like I don't fix cars. Like I don't do that kind of shit. I don't work on AC units. I'm not into electricity. So some of you know, I'm a professional real estate investor. I say professional. I collect six figures a month or a, a month. I wish six figures a year in rent. I have a, 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 a small portfolio, 15 single family homes. Uh, I own my office. I own my personal home here, my estate. Estate, is that what you'd call it? Uh, uh, my place here, right? Some of you've seen if you follow my stories or whatever. This is the backside of the property. It goes way over. So, you know, I grew up in a trailer park. And it's not that this is some, you know, fancy compound. But guess what? You know, like for me to go to the pool, we went to the city pool. I got one in my backyard. You know, if we wanted to go to a fire pit, we would go to the damn city park. I got one in my backyard. I want to go to a hot tub, I'd have to go to the YMCA or some shit, right? I got one in my car. So, one in my car, one in my yard here. So, here we go. I'm getting sidetracked. I tend to do this. Stay with me, guys. There we go. Music. All right, just tell me when. Yes, 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 yes. Hey guys, welcome to the Science of Getting Rich podcast. I'm your host, Gerald Peters. Always remember, whatever you think about comes about. Whatever you focus on grows. Excellent week in the stock market. We've had a hell of a turnaround. If you follow me on that side of the deal with my podcast over on Spotify called the Money Flow Trading Society, it's kind of off the cuff, but it's me commenting on the market. I need to get back more on that. I put together uh, my, my e-course called the 17 steps that's going right now just go to the 17 steps.com that's just me i'm gonna try to take you through 17 videos i'm still working on it i'm working through my favorite book of all time the science of getting rich that's out of one of my podcasts i use this as a basic blueprint because like i was saying in the beginning i didn't go to college so what i knew is all religions all schools of thought, all, 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 all techniques of manifestation, all, all, all self-help or success things all start with one basic premise. How you think is everything. And we could, the one thing they can't control is your mind. Now this shit is hard to get behind and I don't make any means about it that I'm, I'm not trying to make any bones that I'm an expert or I'm this or that. But I have been on the game for a minute. And, and I try to teach from these two books. If this is my free ebook, I'm going to give one of you, I'm going to give you a free, you know what? I'm going to start using a free book on a lot of videos and I'm going to sign it. We'll sign the book and I'm going to send it to someone. How I'm going to do that, I don't know. I could say comment below, I guess. And, if, and then I'll hit someone random each time and send them out the book, you know? Um, if you get it, post it for me. Post it on your social media and just send me a shout out and say, Gerald, thanks for the free book. That's all you gotta do. That don't seem hard, does it? So don't be a lazy ass. Listen, Science of Getting Rich says this. This is super important. So important, I forgot. The Chapter five, increasing life. You must get rid of the last vestige of the old idea that there's a deity whose will it is that you should be poor or whose purpose may be served by keeping you in poverty. Why? Because everyone, regardless of age, race, or financial situation, has a right to get rich. You have the possibility. It's just a math problem. It's just doing things in a certain way. That's what the book teaches. That's really what the book Think and Grow Rich teaches. That's really what most successful people, if you listen to Steve Jobs or Henry Ford or Donald Trump, they're going to tell you the same thing. I did some podcasts on this, and I called it the Alpha Code. 
See, the alpha code isn't about tricking other people or using you know, your sales technique. All that's fine. Everybody can learn to sell. Everyone can learn to buy real estate. That shit ain't hard. A fucking monkey can buy a house, dude. Anybody can buy a house. The shit I've done to become a multimillionaire is dirt simple. It's stupidly simple. This, I don't even have a course on real estate because it's so stupid what I do. I just get on the MLS. I look for a decent house. I don't even give a fuck if it's a deal. It just needs to be a decent house in an area that it'll appreciate. It needs some work so I can get it at a discount and in the future it'll be worth more and I can rent it for a small profit. I wish I could say I did something fancy. That's it. That's it. That's all I do. And I don't own hundreds of units. I didn't have any delusion of becoming some grand real estate guy. I didn't make but $12.50 an hour at my fucking job. I can only buy so many. And I don't have any magic tricks or how to get houses for free or use other people's money. The only other people's money I use is my partner at the bank. Because that's how I do it. Now, could I go out and learn other ways? And could I do direct mailings and all of that? True. Most of this shit you're going to see where people are trying to sell you on a shortcut or a trick or a wholesale, like becoming a wholesaler, the chances of you pulling that off are slim to fucking none. Because what they're leaving out is how much money you have to spend in marketing and advertising and having a team and working the phones. And basically, instead of having a side hustle, you create a whole new fucking business that has nothing to do with real estate. It has everything to do with marketing. Most of this shit is a shell game. You understand that, right? The people aren't actually doing the shit they're showing you. They're making the money showing you the shit that they think you could do that they don't actually do or they did it one time at a different way, or they got lucky, right? They got lucky. Like Tiger Woods can show you to play golf, but you're not gonna be Tiger Woods unless you were born with some natural uh, strengths, some natural tendencies, some na like, you know, the same will and drive. He can't impart that to you. He can't impart experience to you. So sometimes when people are teaching, they're teaching from the top of the fucking mountain, meaning they've been up there a minute. And so this guy up here may go, you know, you don't want to spend time working on rental properties. That's a big waste of time. But here's the problem. You ain't got no money. You're blue collar. You're average. You're coming from the trailer park, right? You got to work with what you have, with where you are, with what you can do. And so you can't do the shit the way a billionaire need to do it. You need to do the shit the way you know to do it. And that's what I did. That's how I got into real estate. And I just began to think like, how you think is everything. Pillar number one, we, on YouTube, we've been doing this series on the 10 pillars of success, right? Let's make sure we're, we're still good. Pillar number one, how you think is everything. Pillar number two, decide upon your true dreams and goals. We talked about this, writing them down. In other words, pushing your intent into the universe. What is it you want to come true? Right now, let me share one of my big goals with you. I want $1 million in my brokerage accounts. I have five accounts. $1 million. I'm circling it. Anyone that'll listen to me that won't thoroughly get disgusted by me telling them, I tell them about this. This is my fucking mission. This is up there from where I'm at. I'm at about 670. I'm not, a, I'm, look, that's not an impossible number. Some of you have this number now and know a shit ton less than I do about stock market. Like you don't know anything about stock market and you got more than that. Why? Because beginning rich is about doing things in a certain way, whether you did it on purpose or whether accidental, those who do things in this certain way will get rich. Meaning you don't have to know all about the mechanics of a fucking car to drive a car really fast. You don't have to be a race car driver to drive a fucking Lamborghini really fast. Will we all agree that if you know how to drive and you get in the car and you slam on the gas, it'll go really fast. You didn't need any specialized skills or any training, right? Why? Because you're in a vehicle that when you did a certain things in a certain way, the fucking car moved and now you're going really fast and you're not, a, you're not a lot, you, but you get what I'm saying? Meaning if you just save money consistently every month, month after fucking month without reading a book or being told to, guess what? You get rich. Why? Certain way, mathematical certainty. Time times amount times yield. How much time do you have? And so if you've been doing it for a while, how much amount are you putting in? So if you're just putting in, you know, X dollars a month, blah, 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 blah. And then, oh, you're getting an eight, nine, 10, 12, 15% return. Guess what happens? Over a period of time, you just grow richer and richer and richer. No fucking shit. Like you need to be told that. But a lot of people do. In other words, if right now you're not doing that, you have no chance at all ever of getting rich. 
at all. Now, you might be getting rich in a business, okay? That's a, that's a little different conversation, and you know that's how most people get rich, but I'm not talking about that. But if you are successful in a business, if you don't take your energy, the capital, that sweet stuff that you worked and put your time and effort and labor into, that stuff they gave you, that fucking currency, that shit in your checking account, if you don't convert that into something that will produce without you doing anything, meaning every one of you people watching right fucking now should have accounts that produce. They take time, they times it times amount, meaning the more you put in, the more it works to your advantage, times yield. It produces dividends. It's a growth stock. It's a REIT. It's a business development company. It's a trailer. It's a condo. It's a storage facility. It's a equity share in a business. It's, you get what I'm saying? Meaning you take your labor, your time, your talent, your fucking treasure, and you convert it into something, a vehicle that will take you to where you expand. And now all of a sudden that shit that expanded is working for you, but you and only you can get that process rolling. They don't teach you that in high school. Think of that. 12 fucking years in school, 12 fucking years, and you don't have any passive income. Meaning everyone in your family, they couldn't put 10 bucks a week in. You have a child and you're not putting in 10 bucks a week? You are fucking greedy. Why are you not helping them? Time times amount times yield. You're supposed to be their dad. You're supposed to be their mom. And this is how you get rich. You put in money that produces return. You compound it and you do it over a long period of time. Hello. This is not a secret. This is the blueprint to fucking wealth. Investing. Ta-da! You have children. Do they have an account? No. So you're going to wait till they're 18. They get to start at fucking zero. 18 years of wasted time. Think on this. If everyone could just get what I'm saying, your family will be perpetually fucking rich. It will change the family tree forever. Because you guys do things in a certain way. And you push that on everyone in your group. Everyone in your tribe, everyone in your severe, your influence, when you walk in the room, when you get up, when you're there, it is prosperity, abundance thinking. We are trying to push and expand. Yeah, shit will happen. Problems will arise. We're not victims. We're fucking victors. Pillar number 10, take full responsibility. Meaning you have control. And we know God's on our side. Because we just opened with, there is no deity. There's no one. There's no universal power. There's no one that wants you down but you. And maybe some fucking humans in your way. And you might have some walls and some mountains and some valleys. You might have to dig some fucking holes or push things or climb over things or take a punch. Right? And shit ain't fair at the same time. I won't let you in on that. Life ain't fair. And in the midst of that shit, in the midst of life not being fair, you have a fucking obligation. Yeah, you. And me. And here's the thing. First, to the crown, meaning my obligation is to me. I need to be healthy. I need to be wealthy. And I need to be fucking what? Finish it. Health, wealth, and mindset. Starts with me. Meaning I got to love me. You got to love you. You can't. If you don't love you, how the fuck are you going to love children? How are you going to love your neighbor? It's impossible. You have to see yourself as rich. You have to see yourself that there is no one that wants you to stop from being rich. And I don't mean just in money. I mean in time. In, 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 in. You know what the definition of success is? It's doing what you want to do. So you may be successful right now, but we need to put it in on lock. What if the day comes you can't drive that truck? What if the day comes you can't operate that thing with your machines, with your hands? What if the day comes when that day comes? That's what investing's about. It's first you. You're not investing for the future. You're investing for right now. Meaning when you push that $100 into, let's say, Bitcoin, that was for right now. You just got fucking richer. Locked in. Bam. Damn. I'm a little richer right now. What do I mean by I'm a little richer? Because I didn't give it away. It didn't go to a restaurant. It didn't go to shoes. It didn't go to clothes. I locked it down. And the more you lock down consistently, day after day after day, week after week after week, week, month after month after month, year after year after year, with mathematical fucking certainty, you get rich. Or you could just say, fuck it and not do it. 
It's your choice. So you're broke because right now you chose to be fucking broke. You were born and no one looked over you and said, I should start helping this little baby get rich. And so no one in your family gave a fuck. So now you're 18, 19, 20. You, right now you're 23 years old. You got a car loan. You got student debt and your parents didn't lay up for your future. They are so fucking greedy. They couldn't tap into the millionaire code. And you say, Gerald, listen, listen. <clears throat> The greediest people of all are the people who could know better and don't do it. Meaning they choose to look the other way. They choose it. And you have to see it for what it is, even if it's your loved ones. We love them, man. That's all right. I'm not saying you don't love your uncle. I'm not saying you don't love your brother and your dumbass cousin. But some of you have people that are like vampires and they're not living by the code they're living opposite of the code they're not only going to spend all their money they're going to fuck everyone else too instead of bringing prosperity and opportunity and abundance which is how you cure problems which is how you pay doctor bills which is how you feed children which is how you buy christmas presents if i'm not mistaken instead of that they bring drama and pain and suffering and loss with them and we have to carry that burden and you can't do that if you don't have. Jesus says it's better to give than to receive. Well, I think you have to have it first, right? And your first obligation is to yourself and to the crown. And then it begins to branch out. So what do I mean? I'm trying to explain to you this book. It will change the way you see life. Chapter one, whatever may be said of the praise of poverty, the fact remains it is not possible to live a really complete or successful life unless one is rich. Whew. That'll piss off some socialists. No man or woman can rise to their greatest possible height and talent, soul development, unless he has plenty of money. For to unfold the soul and develop talents, he must have many things to use. He cannot have these things unless he has money to buy them. So those precious little children of yours that you look down upon, this verse applies to them too. And right now, every fucking day you let go by without any sort of treasure laid up for them, no investments because you're, I don't know, what would be the reason? Once someone has given you the answer, the key, the formula, and they've shown it to you and it's right here, what is the re at what point is it it's like I'm negligent at this point? I'm negligent. I'm not preparing them. I'm negligent. At what point are you negligent to yourself? I mean, how many fucking years are you going to do it to you? How many years are you going to be like, fuck it, I'm going to give everyone else my money? At what point do you decide to make you the fucking target priority? Your personal wealth becomes the central most important thing in your life. I ain't say for your whole fucking life. I just meant till you get rich and then you can make your life about giving. See, people want to give before they even have shit. Oh, I'm a big giver. No, you're not. You don't even have shit. What are you giving? Fucking tokens? $20 bills? What, you, you get what I'm saying? Like, in order to give to where you can truly influence people, you need abundance. You need prosperity. You need more than you need. Right? You need more than you need. So you don't give in the beginning. That's not what it's about. It's a misunderstanding of the principles. First responsibility is to you. And understanding there's not a deity trying to stop you and understanding that it is your right by dominion. That you've been chosen. And that it's just a math formula. It's a certain way. There's the science of getting rich. It's an exact science like algebra, arithmetic. There are certain laws that govern the process of acquiring riches. Meaning, get this. There's a thing I put out in this book right here, my free ebook called You Don't Have to Die Broke. I talk about the buckets. Chapter two. And this is the book I'm going to send you. Okay. We're going to start with comments. Hit me with a comment and I'll pick someone, but then I'm going to figure something else out for the free book. I'm going to send you this one right here. So it'll be bent me writing on it. Okay. How a $10 bill changed the way I viewed money. The primary rule when it comes to building wealth is to make sure you're getting a little bit richer every day. It sounds simple, and it is, but I give it the credit for getting me started on my personal journey to building lifelong wealth. 20 years ago, I had a net worth of zero. Today, I'm worth over $3 million. 
I never went to college. I never made over $12.50. I decided to do whatever it took to get, what is it? Uh, decided to do whatever it took to get my situation, get out of my situation. I was literally bathing my brain in new ideas and learning. And I go on to describe what I call how a $10 bill changed my life. What I learned was the process of compounding. Here's the problem. Compounding is the long game. Compounding is the long game, right? And so you have to be impatient with the short game, but patient with the long game. It's this bipolar thing we're doing, right? Meaning impatient with your own activity, impatient with yourself to get off the couch or to get on derealtor.com or to get that credit straight or to get the money together, to launch the business or finish school. Like get off your fucking ass and push your intent. Be doing something. There is no downtime. You can't return all the calls. There's been too much activity. It's too fucking overwhelming for other people, but not for you because you're trying to expand. You're trying to get fucking rich and you're not going to get there being average. You're not going to get there when average shit that fucks up other people fucks up you. You don't get to let it be that way, king, queen. You have to rise to the fucking occasion. And this means you take on more responsibility than other people. Getting rich is about responsibility. So if you have a fucked up credit score, you have to get yourself together first. It starts right there. Like you have to become a person of integrity and keeps his word. Meaning if I sign a piece of paper with you saying I'm going to do something, I fucking do it because I signed it. And the moment you become a person who lives like that, who interacts like that, who treats all transactions like that, so you're not willy-nilly signing a fucking phone contract or getting into a car or signing a fucking lease or getting this or that or this or that, you no longer borrow for furniture. Because you have higher fucking ideas in life. You're trying to go somewhere bigger. And so I can't waste money and capital and time and interest on some dumbass shit that goes to zero when there's all this shit that could make me rich out there that I could borrow on. You have to switch your mind from borrowing from junk, borrowing for junk that goes down, or borrow for shit that goes up. I'd rather see you borrow money for fucking Bitcoin than to buy a car. And there's most everyone on here is like, are you out of your mind? It's gone up 200% a year every fucking year for 10 fucking years. How many more years do you need? So you could have borrowed money. You could have borrowed 30 grand, put it in there, and you'd be a fucking multi-trillionaire. Or you have your stupid car that sits in your front yard. You tell me, why did you choose the car over Bitcoin? I didn't do it either, but I'm asking why. Why would you borrow on a car but not buy Facebook? Did you did Facebook fucking surprise you? You didn't know about Apple? Like I could name a hundred companies that are right in your face. You don't own them. Why? The money flow is everywhere. It is all around you. You're fucking eating it, looking at it. 3M, <coughs> this water, tables, everything here from Home Depot. Like that game can be played on a phone at any time. And yet people will borrow to buy the dumbest shit. You're going to borrow to get fucking married? Are you kidding me to go on a trip? How fucking selfish can you be? Because you owe the universe to stand up and be the person that you were called to be. And you can't do that unless you have money or wealth. And you can't have money or wealth when you go around spending it on dumb shit that's not your calling. That's not your blessing to the world to be a fucking milk cow who provides the interest and dividends for other people. You have to have some kind of fucking renewing of your mind. And this is why most people are broke. Because they've never had a renewing of your mind. See, in the Bible, it talks about a renewing of the mind. What does it mean? It means you don't get to live out there and live in here. You're either fucking in or out. You're either on this path pursuing wealth or you're fucking not. It's easy as that. You're either talking shit or doing shit. You decide. Enough fucking excuses. No, I'm sick of it. It pisses me off that everyone on here is not a millionaire when it's right here and it's that fucking simple. It is as simple as can be. I didn't need a book or a goddamn course to buy a house. They sold me this one without taking a course. And yet there's people, and guess what? You replace, I'm not saying don't educate, but listen to what I'm saying in the context of this message. Stop replacing reading and studying and thinking that it's activity. It's not. Reading a fucking book does not get you to where you're trying to go. Investing money gets you to where you're trying to go. Now, you need to read the book to get there. I get that. But goddamn, how many books are we going to read? How many courses are we going to take? 
How many fucking paydays are we going to pass by? How long are you going to give up the equation? Time times amount times yield. Like how long are your children going to go without passive income working for them? At what point do you decide, fuck it, I'm tired of being broke. And guess what happens when you say, well, it's too long. No, 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 no. You got to be patient with the long game. You got to believe there's not an entity that wants you to be broke. You've got to believe the universe will compile, will come around to help you. This number, this fucking number, 1 million is really fucking high. I've been on this game for 21 years. So if I have $3 million, divide 3 million by 21. That's a big fucking number. You think I saved $100,000 a year? Fuck no. I saved 5,000, put it in a deal. Saved up 16,000, bought a house. Did that one more time, went back to the first house, pulled out equity, put that into the stock market, started taking the rent, meaning I pushed my intent. I went and got it. I went hunt it. And I rose up that day to go get it. That's how I did it. After work, on the fucking weekends. It's called the eighth day. So you can go fucking fishing, go do the shit you do. It, oh, that's what, but not this. You don't get that choice and chase, the, chase the, what I'm talking about unless you have big money. Now, if you're rich, you have a great job, you're making a lot of money, good fucking for you. Guess what? If I had what you had, I'd fucking tundra exit. If I had what you had with what I know, I'd be way fucking richer than you. And if you don't think like that, then you're on a different game. And it's not a message for everyone. I'm talking, if you're broke right now, you don't get to be like these people. You have a fucking calling. Your job is to change you, your family, and your family tree. And most people are not called to that. Most people are called to ordinary, to fucking average, to be broke. And then those people can get to the end of their life and fucking try to vote our money away. That's, that's the reality. That's the fucking truth. You choose. There's no deity. There's no fucking uh, 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 ism. There's no fucking God. There's nothing stopping you. It's just personal decisions. It's actions. And it starts with your mind. And it means when you turn this video off, what you go do. Here's what I'm fixing to go do. Work on this house. You say, well, I don't want to do that all the time. Good. Don't. I wasn't talking to you. I'm talking to the person that actually wants it. See, when you want to play in the NFL, you don't get to be like normal people. You're in the fucking gym. You're practicing reps. You're busy. They are not out partying until they get rich, right? Because if you start doing the end part before the grind part, you never get to the end part, right? You get what I'm saying? And that ain't for everyone. The treasure's reserved. It's laid up. It isn't fair. And it's fucking hard. And you get to decide. 93 percenter, 7 percenter. It's it. Hey, check it out. I'm going to stop right there. I'm starting to rant and rave. I like to come back to it. Um, all that said and love and compassion, I want to give away this book to someone. Hey, so come on. Come on. Fucking give me a comment. Say something. Don't say something stupid. Uh, let me sign this and get to one of you. And then I'll figure out a better way to do that. I need to start doing that on more videos. If you already have the book, then... Just be nice and hit a comment. You don't have to die broke. I give it away as an ebook. If you hit my link up here, like, don't be a dummy. It's not hard to find. Don't put it in the comments. How do I get your book? Click the goddamn, do a little work, man. Fuck, look around. Like, click the link, right? Subscribe unless you're, it, it, I notice a lot of people have like T-Rex. They can't reach their wallets. They can't reach the button. Fucking lazy. Just steal, just suck and steal from society. Just me, me, me. And then when you're asked to get, they're like, oh, yeah, man. I don't know. So anyway, you know what to do. Appreciate you listening.